Uh, I am a mathematician who is so strangely um, changed from applied mathematics to pure mathematics. Uh, I find it hard sometimes to explain my math to my mom, but she also has very interesting uh, advices from the African wisdom that I do not understand sometimes. So let us take a look at this one. So she told me just a few days ago, in fact, she's reminding me that if you shave your head, don't throw away the hair, because if you, a bird uses it to build a nest, you'll go insane. Well, it's a very interesting advice, right? But we're going to connect this with science. But let me introduce you to another mother. So this one is the mother of uh, shape optimization, the field of, of research in which I am working with. So her name is uh, Queen Dido. So she was a king. Queen, she arrived in uh, the north of Africa 700 years ago before the Christ. And there she met a queen, a king. That king didn't want her to stay for political reason and asked her to stay as long as you can stay in a land that can fit in the skin of a single cow. So the king was very clever. So the queen took the skin of the cow and cut it into small pieces and turned it into a, sink, into a long rope. Then she went to build a city near the coast. Well, when I heard this story, so it was something very interesting to me. Why near the coast? Why not inside the land? Because in general, we want to have the maximum land that we could have if we have a fixed perimeter, something that will cover our land. And this is where my research started. And uh, so what I was interested in, in somehow, is to see where this land should be, the earth, and how it should look like, what is the shape, the optimal shape. And this requires a lot of mathematical tools. So you can see maybe, in fact, the city was supposed to be like this. Uh, and, uh, this is, and that city is the one that we know today as Carthage in Tunisia. So the interesting question here is that when you look at the coast, which is not striped, so in a sense, it is quite curved. And you must say this curvature will have effect in the location of the city. And the city should be, in fact, near the coast, and where the coast is more curved. So this is one of my first results in mathematics. But when we do mathematics, most of the times, so we do not just look at the land, but we, just, we always uh, think about object with optimal shapes. And at the same time, the land and the droplets, if you look at them, they are nearly the same mathematically, right? So these are droplets, and they are like half spheres in the absence of gravity. So looking at objects and so on, so we also can see uh, different uh, interfaces, which are all have very interesting properties that you can observe here. We have droplets, we have liquids, we have land, but they are all have some interesting things that link them, which is that they are uniformly curved. And there is a mathematical way to quantify this notion of curvature. And this is the thing that I would like to show you. So, non-mathematicians, so don't be scared, because even the mathematicians will be scared. <laughs> so, imagine you want to compute, so imagine you want to know the curvature of the coast, the border of Africa, which is like an object. Then you just stand up at one point. So please, if you are not a mathematician, don't try to read it, just listen to me. <laughs> So, when you stand up in the board of Africa, if anyone inside Africa talks to you or interacts with you, you label plus one. If someone outside Africa talks to you or interacts with you in one way or another, you label it minus one. And then you sum up all this plus and minus one, almost as in high school. And then you end up with the curvature of the board of Africa, as long as you run all around the board. The mathematicians who want to recover the mean curvature has to take this parameter S equal to 1. So this notion of curvature, which is quite general, comes to us from financial mechanics and special relativity.
So we are in a forum after the talk, anyone who wants to talk to me, and we can fill up the blackboards. <laughs> so in working with this, so with some colleagues in uh, Spain and Germany, so we, after two years working, so we are about to publish a paper which will appear in a few weeks, uh, say, in the archive, so maybe some of, the old, some of you will know. And uh, so we have very interesting objects that we found and which, uh, okay, is this kind of uh, uh, lattice of spheres. So crystallographers would probably tell me, wow, when you have this, then you probably would have more than that. In fact, there are 14, which are the bravest lattices. Okay, and also our next challenge is to link this with polymer science and fluid, nuclear fluids. Uh, let me come back to this. Maybe many people was waiting for me to talk about this. So this advice, which is telling me that I should not throw my hair, but I, well, I have to do it. I have to use it to do something else. So in a sense, most of the times when I was a child, I was burying my hair because, yeah. Uh, well, it seems like a belief, uh, but in my opinion, there is science. There is science behind it. Science which are inside us when we are a child, and I am sure the next Einstein from Africa has 99 percent of chance to meet this kind of African wisdom. So now my question is, how do we make a smooth transition from what we know, what is inside us, to modern science? Let me try to say, maybe if I would be trying to start some lecture, how I would do if I know this. If you take a single hair, it has a mass, therefore it will fall down in the earth to the attraction of gravity. And since its mass is too small, it is easily dragged by other forces of the wind. And in any case, it will end up to some place that will probably harm someone or spread disease. And this is precisely what my mom wanted to tell me, that, well, use the list, just the Newton's law, and then you should not do that. Bury your hair, it's better. <laughs> so, in conclusion, I would like to send a message that helping our kids moving from science to belief to culture and curiosity is the key to the development of science in Africa. Thank you very much.